welcome to WWE NXT where everything on the show feels like pointless filler? NXT, you have a two hour special event coming up in a few short weeks. What gives? Hello all MRBers and welcome to another video with me, Mike McRock, one half of the McRock and Bolt Wrestling Review Show and right now I'm going to deliver to you fans out there my review for WWE NXT for the December 2nd edition of 2015. We are now three weeks away from NXT TakeOver England and I'm actually piped up for it. I'm amped up for it. I don't think this week's episode done the job that I wanted to, but last week's really got me excited. This week's episode was just kind of like, hopefully the calm before the go-home show in a couple of weeks' time. I'll explain that as I go along on this review. So we kick off the show with Baron Corbin versus the Perfect Ten, Ty Dillinger. And this was basically an enhancement match where Baron Corbin goes over here. Nothing new. You've seen it all before. And really, the point of this match was to make Baron Corbin look strong and look imposing going into his match with Apollo Crews at TakeOver England. And that's pretty much all I really need to say about the storyline between Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews. Then we got Nia Jax versus Blue Pants. Sorry, I got carried away there. But this was another enhancement match where Nia Jax goes over here. And to me, when NXT delivers to make Nia Jax look like a big monster heel that can't be stopped, they actually do a good job. At doing so, even in the backstage interview where Bailey was cutting her promo, saying the same thing she says over and over and over in every promo. And uh, Nia Jax walks up to her, smiles, goes away for a bit, but then takes Bailey out and also knocks down a door off the hinges. And I'm thinking, wow, this woman could be ready for being the NXT Women's Championship. I'm wondering if NXT is actually going to go all the way with Nia Jax being the NXT Women's Champion this early. Yeah, I could see it happen because we saw what happened a while ago when Kevin Owens was uh, quickly inserted into the NXT title picture, and I can see what NXT is doing with Nia Jax. My only nitpick about the backstage segment was that Nia Jax had to attack Bailey uh, from behind. To me, Nia Jax strikes to me as an imposing figure that would steamroll right through someone when she's face to face with, with someone. And to me, this was a character trait of a cowardly chicken shit heel that most Carly Chicken Shit Heel do. You know, this is their tactic, but I don't see this in Nia Jax, and that's my only issue with it. I hope NXT doesn't do this too much because it would make her look like a weak, whatever you want to call it. But overall, in terms of building up Nia Jax, getting to this point, NXT so far is, is doing good. Not great, but they're doing a pretty good job at doing so. Then we get a sit-down interview with Dash and Dawson, and they're talking about their opponents at TakeOver England, Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy, saying that they are all talking no action, and I get the feeling that they didn't see, or, or they just weren't aware of the beatdown that they took last week. To me, in terms of psychology, that's a bit of a miss because I feel like that, you know, when opponents get beat up uh, from show last week and, and they act like it never happened, I'm thinking in terms of a psychology standpoint, it was like a what the heck moment. But in terms of a character standpoint, I kind of understand it because they're supposed to be tough rednecks that could brush off anything and I get why they kind of acted this way I mean they're like Enzo and Kaz who are they you know they're a couple of nobodies you know they will that there will never be tag team champions 
I'll get to that in my prediction video, but in terms of mic work, I think they can deliver if the if the uh, scripted promos didn't come off as scripted. I think if if they had a little bit more of a leisure in terms of writing their own material, I think they would be a little bit more effective. But I like them. I like them as a team. To me, that the uh, tag team titles make them stand out as a team, and I. And in terms of Enzo Mori and Colin Cassie, they don't need it. But like I said, I'll save all my thoughts for my prediction video as time goes on. Now we get to James Storm versus Adam Rose. Another enhancement match where James Storm goes over here. Now I understand that NXT wants the audience to get used to Storm after his debut about a month ago. We never saw him ever since, but now he's here. He's in a match with Adam Rose. And... I'm all fine and good with this match, but I don't see that the point of having this match at this point in time needs to happen here because every segment now on in for the next two or three episodes before heading into a takeover needs to be people that are involved in the two-hour special, and it doesn't seem like NXT has anything to do with Storm or Adam Rose for that matter heading into TakeOver England so I just didn't see the point of having this match. It, it was filler. That's basically what it was getting into the next match. Jason Jordan and Chad Gable versus the VOD villains. To me this was the match of the night obviously uh, besides Samoa Joe and uh, to me this was a more and an effective match for the VOD villains because after coming off of the rematch last week, I didn't find that match to be all that good. But with this match for the Vaude Villains, this was much better for them. And it was a decent ending as well. I like the idea of the Vaude Villains refusing to shake the hands of Jason Jordan and Chad Gable. Because it signalizes that they're going to turn heel, which I'm going to point it out there right now. Why even have them be a babyface team in the first place with the tag team titles? I just really didn't understand the logic behind that. And in terms of their name, the VOD Villains, you would think with a tag team that has the name VOD Villains that they would be villains, not babyfaces. You know, it's just. WWE logic. I really don't understand that, but I like it. And to me, it's it's almost like they're going to tell a story now between these two teams, you know, about showing respect, not having respect, what have you. Now, this would have been much better if this was heading into a show called Takeover Respect. That happened just not too long ago, but hey, you know what? I can live with this. I like the ending of this match, and I like the ending of how the Vaude Villains refused to shake the hands. Of Jason Jordan and Chad Gable. Now we get to Emma versus Liv Morgan. Again, another enhancement match. By God, how many enhancement matches are we going to get to here? But yeah, this was Emma's way of gaining momentum heading into TakeOver England, which she faces Asuka. And then Asuka appears on the Titron, punching and kicking the boxing bag, and apparently that was enough to make Emma look afraid of her. To me, uh, this wasn't all that good I think that it, it was just Asuka kicking and punching the bag and not doing very much of it it was like okay that was it and to me it was just it just wasn't really effective at all it wasn't effective storytelling the execution was just came across as really lazy and they done a much better job last week when they showed vulnerability to Asuka's character but this week to me it was just lazy to me this was the weakest segment on the show and we get into the main event Samoa Joe versus Tomasa Champa again in an enhancement match where Samoa Joe goes over here but in terms of the match itself it, it was actually very solid I like the physicality of it and I would like to see these two face each other again sometime in the future because it seems like their styles mesh well and they seem to have pretty good chemistry here and even though 
they you know they touch base on Tomasa Chapa and what he's like and who trains him, etc., etc. This is more about Samoa Joe and his momentum heading into take over England. And let me just tell you this: I really like the side of Samoa Joe. I mean, they kind of touch base on it in TNA uh, when Samoa Joe was a heel there, but to me, there's something different about this version of Samoa Joe. It feels more real and much more imposing than what Joe was like in TNA. And he seems more intense in a subtle way and it makes him look edgier. It's like he's slow and methodical, but not too slow. He kind of really takes his time. And that's what, he, that's what I really like about Samoa Joe here. And so far, I think NXT is doing a good job of making Joe look like an imposing figure. My hats off to NXT so far in building up Samoa Joe. I don't think he's going to win the NXT title. And in fact, I don't think he should win the NXT title because I don't think he would benefit to being the NXT champion. I'll get to all of that in my prediction video in a couple of weeks. But overall... Really, this show just felt like a lot of filler. There wasn't a whole heck of a lot to it. It was a very loaded show. Six matches on the card, which is a little bit much for an hour of NXT. All of them were enhancement matches and hardly any build-up to take over England, which is fine because last week's show focused more on that. So I understand the idea of dimming down the storytelling and let the wrestling do the talking here and it creates a bit of a balance in shows but this show just felt like it was struggling to get going in the first half and once the 30 minute mark hit it was starting to get good but then after the tag team match the show just kind of went back to being what it was like in the first half and to me that the pacing just felt slow and it just didn't flow very well. But in terms of structuring and formatting and what NXT makes feel important and what not important and less important and more important, what etc. etc. You know, I think they've done a good job in that area. But in if this was a go home show, I, I'm glad this wasn't a go home show because I would be butchering all over it. I mean, we only got two more. Uh, NXT episodes, so I'm glad this wasn't a go-home show because I just didn't feel like they were trying enough, but you are going to be entertained by this one hour, so I'm going to say that this week's episode of NXT delivered 2.4 uh, points out of 5. I would recommend you watching this show, and my question to you, are you getting ready for TakeOver England. And what are your thoughts about this week's episode of NXT? Whatever they are, feel free to leave those comments right here in the comment section below. And you can also hit that subscribe button down below this video as well to become an MRBer on this wrestling review show.